Hello, welcome to History Tea, the channel where I spill the tea on history. Today's video will be about Clara Barton, also known as the Angel of the Battlefield, an extraordinary woman responsible for many firsts in history. Just so y'all know, this video is going to be split into three parts. If you read the title, this is part one on her childhood. Quite frankly, Clara was just too much of a woman to be condensed into only one video, and I just want to do her justice. Uh, for just a quick overall gist of her life, she was a, um, a teacher, a, the first female patent clerk, a nurse during the Civil War, the founder of the American Red Cross, the founder of the First Aid Society, as well as an author. So, let's get started. Clarissa Harlow Barton was born on December 25th, 1821, yes, Christmas Day, sucky birthday, in Oxford, Massachusetts. She was the youngest of five, with her youngest sibling being about 10 years older than her, I think. So, Clara might have been a bit of a surprise, but who can really say for sure. Nevertheless, Clara was very loved by her family, and her siblings were more authority figures than playmates, but that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Clara's parents and siblings all chipped in to educate her in their own little ways. So her oldest brother, Stephen, taught her what he knew best, which was math. And her other brother, David, who was a bit of an athlete or a daredevil of his time, uh, taught her a bit of that. One of his more notable little lessons was the time he took a five-year-old Clara and put her on the bare back of a semi-broken but mostly wild horse and told her to cling fast to the mane. He then jumped on the back of his own wild horse, and then they together ran through a field of even more wild horses. Now, this does sound very extreme, <laughs> but based on Clara's description of this event, I believe that David had the reins of both his horse and Clara's horse in his hands the whole time, so it's not like her horse could have just run off with her on it. And she was okay. So it's all good. And this event would cause a love for horses throughout Clara's whole life and um, will come in handy later in her life as well. So I guess you done good, David. <laughs> Clara's father, Captain Stephen Barton, was a former soldier and he would tell her of his war stories from the French and Indian Wars. He also taught her all of the presidential cabinet members, the president and other government officials and what their jobs were. They would set up these little war games to play all around their house, and through those games, Clara learned military rankings and military etiquette, which is, again, something that would be useful in her future. Meanwhile, Clara's sisters, Sarah and Dorothea Barton, also known as Sally and Dolly, were teaching her more practical things like sewing, reading, writing, poetry, etc. In fact, there was one time where Clara actually got her hands on an atlas from school, and she would wake up her poor sisters in the early hours of the morning so that they could point out countries and mountains and rivers and everything else to her. Um, unfortunately, while Clara was quite still young, Dorothea became a confirmed invalid and Clara was unable to learn from her anymore. I'm not sure what happened. All Clara wrote was that she became a confirmed invalid, so I have no idea what the situation was, but Clara did, learn, uh, did write about how she lost her beautiful guidance. And you may be wondering where Clara's mother, Sarah Barton, is in all of this familial education. Well, <laughs> she wasn't really involved, and I don't, it, it wasn't out of like an aloofness or disinterest. I think it was more just, she had done this four times already, and she was like, we'll just, I'm not doing this again, we'll just, she'll be fine. <laughs> she has them, she doesn't need me, it's fine. And I think if you are a parent with multiple children or, had multiple siblings, you will understand this. <laughs> um, I think that Sarah thought that she would turn out okay at the very least, and actually she turned out to be one of the most remarkable women in history, so she wasn't wrong. <laughs> Clara loved animals. I mean, she better. She grew up on a farm and she played outdoors all the time. Her first pet was a medium-sized white dog named Button. Button was the family dog before Clara came along, but once she did, he clung to her side and decided that he was hers and she was his. When Clara was learning how to walk, he would stay by her side all the time and help her pick herself back up when she fell. The two were practically inseparable and even shared a bed. At one point, a family friend gifted Clara a basket of two dozen duck eggs. She took the eggs, found three hens in the barn willing to keep them warm, and left them in their care. 
When the eggs finally hatched, Clara's favorite little pond out front of her house was full of cute little yellow fluff balls. Um, she would watch them grow and learn from other wild ducks that would stop by during their migration, and she loved watching them learn. And she described it as not only interesting, but inspiring and instructive. At the age of 10, Clara's father gifted her a brown marking horse with a curly black mane and hair named Billy. She loved him, and he was a good horse, and she would take him riding with her friends all the time. Clara also grew especially fond of some of the more tame cattle on their farm, and she believed that they were hers. And so every night she would go out and take care of them. On one unfortunate night, though, she came across the farm hands leading an ox into the barn for slaughter. And when she saw him killed, she fainted. Then in her book, she wrote, I lost all desire for meat if I had ever had it and all through life to the present, have only eaten it when I must for the sake of appearance, or as circumstance seemed to make it the more proper thing to do. The bountiful ground has always yielded enough for all my needs and wants." So, there you go, vegans and vegetarians. Here is your hero. I've read a lot of things that say that Clara was too shy or timid to really make any friends and was a bit of a loner, but based on her own words, that's just untrue. She had at least a decent amount of friends. And I'm not going to go into detail on all of them right now because I really just don't have the time in this video, but her best friend was a girl named Nancy Fitz, who she attended school with and walked to school with, and Clara and Nancy would remain friends until they were old and gray. The school seasons were a little different at this time. They attended three months of school twice a year, winter and summer school. So kind of like now, but reversed. Uh, she did receive that at-home education, mostly on life skills or street smarts, but her family did make it very clear that that was not a substitution for actual school. She would be carried on one of her brother's shoulders every morning to school, and when she first started attending school, she made it very clear to her teacher that she was too advanced for the class she was put in, so she was then moved to a more advanced class. Uh, she did do a brief stint at a boarding school when she was a little bit older, but she suffered from anxiety, which is something I'll elaborate more on later, and it just kind of got the better of her while she was there. She began to socially detach herself, and she would either eat very little or nothing at all. So finally her family came to get her and brought her home where she attended the school in town again. I mentioned earlier that Clara was a nurse during the Civil War, and her nursing career actually started in her childhood. One day while helping a neighbor raise a barn by hand, David Daredevil Barton, as I'm calling him from now on, fell from a great height and landed on his feet and claimed to be okay, but that soon proved to be untrue. It started with a headache, the moment he fell, and then a few days later turned into a fever. And I'm definitely not a doctor, but I'm thinking maybe a concussion from the jolt of hitting the floor? I don't know, but something was definitely wrong. Doctors started coming to the house to see David, and keep in mind throughout this part of the video that this was no later than the 1830s, and medicine was just... It was just a whole other ball game back then. So the doctors came to the conclusion that David had too much blood and bleeding commenced. And then his headache kept getting worse. They started to apply blisters anywhere they could find on his body to draw the pain away from the head, which honestly is not unlike cupping today. And this was obviously a very hard time for Clara. I don't think she ever said it or ever would have, but I'm pretty sure David was her favorite sibling. Just based on the way that she talked about him and the amount that she talked about him compared to her other siblings, so keeping that in mind, you can imagine how hard it would be for her to see him hurting and really as far as they knew, dying. Clara kind of took it upon herself to become David's full-time nurse, although honestly, he kind of chose her in a way. Their friendship was definitely not one-sided and he kind of leaned on her in his time of need. But she would learn from the doctors coming to visit David and quickly became a little pro. Clara was actually very bright and quite a quick learner. She learned how to dress his wounds, how to administer his medicine, and how to <laughs> apply the leeches and take them off for the bleeding. Sounds real fun. Uh, she would continue to uh, treat David for many months until finally his fever broke, but that still was not a full recovery. He 
the medicines given to him over such a long period of time had just made his body so weak. And soon after the fever broke, he would stand for the first time, but that was still not a full recovery because his body was so weak. Uh, the doctors and Clara would continue with their treatments for many more months to no avail until finally a new kind of doctor came to the Barton family with a new kind of treatment. Steam doctors were doctors who believed that pretty much anything could be cured by steaming the illness out of the pores via a vapor bath. A man named Dr. Asa McCollum uh, traveled to the Barton family from a nearby town and offered to help. Now, a lot of physicians saw this medicine as quack medicine, when honestly, their medicine was the quack medicine, but that's another video. Anyway, the Barton family was probably skeptical, I'm sure, as they had a right to be. But David was desperate, and he was willing to try anything, and he okayed it. So he traveled with Dr. McCollum to his home where he was treated for three weeks, and when he returned home, Clara said it was like David had risen from the dead. So he made a full recovery and was able to return to his business right away. And, you know, I don't know if it was the the vapor bath that cured him, or if it was just a ceasefire of the toxic medicines that he was being given. Uh, but either way, he was okay, and he was alive, and Claire was glad to have him back. This whole span of time where Claire was taking care of David was two years, and those two years definitely did take a toll on Clara. She didn't even grow an inch, and she only gained one pound in that time. She only attended one half day of school, and she even wrote, I almost forgot that there was an outside to the house. <laughs> so, she really did devote herself to David completely, and that's not something that's really easy to come out of when it's just suddenly over one day, and you're expected to just go about business as usual. And don't get me wrong, it was a blessing that David was alive, but, you know, she was kind of just left sitting there like, okay, um, what do I do now? And she really struggled with all this free time on her hands. <laughs> Thankfully, she did find solace in reading. But this behavior of devoting herself to someone and then not really being able to take the time for herself, unfortunately, was not a one-time thing. And that is a pattern that you will see repeated throughout her whole life. At or around the age of 16, Clara became a teacher. Now, I'm not quite clear on the age just because I've seen everything from 15 to 18 and Clara never mentioned her age at this point in her book, but I've seen 16 the most, so we're going with that. And her parents, Sarah and Stephen Barton, were very liberal and always open to learning, learning new things and very hospitable. So when a man named Ellen Fowler was in town to give lectures on the new idea of phrenology and needed a place to stay, the Bartons opened their home. Over the course of a month, Mr. Fowler had many conversations with Clara's mother. Sarah was so worried about Clara and just didn't know what to do with her. She wasn't disobedient at all. She just was so timid to the point that she never made her needs or wants known to anyone. And Sarah was just so terrified that she was gonna unknowingly neglect her child. <laughs> Uh, one day, Clara overheard Mr. Fowler telling her mother that her shy or timid characteristics may be outgrown, but the sensitive nature will always remain. She will never assert herself for herself. She will suffer wrong first, but for others, she will be perfectly fearless, which you will see why that is so ironic soon, or significant soon. And then said so that Shara, Sarah should throw responsibility upon her. She has all the qualities of a teacher. Clara soon became a teacher for District Number 9. She was examined by a clergyman, a lawyer, and a justice of the peace, as well as made to look older and larger. Because remember, taking care of David kind of stunted her growth, and she was only about 16. On her first day of school, she didn't really know how to kick things off, so she just had all those who could read, read Bible verses, and then discuss what they had read. And it actually went over very well with the class, and you know, that's what you do in an English class anyway. <laughs> Her students ranged from the age of 4 to 13, with the exception of four boys who were as tall as her and about her age. And these boys had made it very difficult for the previous teacher and were prepared to do so for Clara, but after playing some sort of game with them outside, she had gained their respect. I guess she had shown them that she was strong and she could handle the boys, which 
you know. I guess hold having older brothers can be useful. <laughs> At the end of the school year, Clara's school received first in discipline as an award, and she was actually very upset over this because she was like, I never disciplined my kids. They just obeyed me because they wanted to. Um, but this did prove to be a helpful badge to have on her record as a teacher because it did open the doors to so many other schools. And there will be more on Clara's teaching later, but this is it for now. Just know that Clara did love her students and they loved her. Clara's brothers owned a business called S&D Barton and one of their new businesses was the manufacturing of cloth and Clara decided that she wanted in. She had seen the factory in progress and was out of school at the moment and needed something to do. You know Clara in free time doesn't mix well. So she went to her family with her desire and they laughed at her, <laughs> which I'm sure was hurtful. And then they tried to reason with her telling her that she was too small until finally Stephen, the oldest brother, piped up and said, y'all, this is an honorable, honorable request. She just wants a job. And she took care of David at such a young age when no one that age should have to do that. And if she can do that, why can't she just work a loom? It's ridiculous. And because he was the oldest sibling and partial owner of the factory, everyone listened to him. And the very next day, Clara was off to work at the factory. And she described stepping on the loom platform for the first time as a queen stepping on the throne for the first time, which I just thought was very sweet. Um, she was very good at it and she loved it. Unfortunately, after just a short two weeks, the factory burned down <laughs> on a day off, thankfully and was reduced to a pile of smoking rubble within three hours. So that was the end of Clara's looming career, unfortunately. <laughs> Something about Clara that is very important, in my opinion anyway, is her struggle with anxiety. At the time they called it shyness or timidity, and she even described it once as awkwardness, but it was anxiety. You can see it in little bits throughout her whole childhood and one story that's very significant and something that I really personally relate to is the time that David asked her to travel to Maine with him for his wedding. Now keep in mind that at this time it was pretty normal for key family members like parents or siblings to not be in attendance to a wedding and Clara was the only family, family member attending his and he really wanted her there and that meant so much to her and she said yes of course. And the day that they were supposed to leave for Maine on a boat, they were waiting on the platform and the boat was late, which gave her time to start to spiral with her anxiety, which if you have it, I'm sure you know what I mean. I've been there so many times. <laughs> um, she'd never been on a boat before and she just started crying and she was like, I'm gonna ruin the whole wedding. Just David, let me go home, please. And he was like, no. So she ended up getting on the boat, made it to Maine. Everything was great. And then David and his bride sat her down and were like, will you please be one of our bridesmaids? <laughs> Which is very sweet and it meant so much to her. So she said yes, but then of course she just spiraled again. She was like, oh my God, I'm gonna ruin the whole wedding again. <laughs> so she did it and she ended up not ruining the wedding and it was all great. And I've been there before, literally with my sister's wedding asking me to be the maid of honor. I was like, yes, oh my God, my sister wants me to be her maid of honor yay but i'm gonna ruin the whole wedding <laughs> i ended up not ruining the wedding either so good on us um but i if you have anxiety you can sympathize with her situation where she faced her fear getting on the boat and then was immediately stuck with another hurdle <laughs> so that's just something to keep in mind knowing about clara and if you do struggle with anxiety like i do and like Clara did, maybe you can be inspired by her the way that I'm inspired by her because she never let it get in her way. Because with anxiety, it's so easy to like, wanna cut and run, you know? You just, oh, I just, if this scares me, I'm just not gonna do it. But she never let that get in her way. So take a page out of Clara's book. <laughs> Don't worry y'all, we are coming to an end. To wrap this video up, I just want to say that Clara wrote a book called The Story of My Childhood, which was published in 1907. And that is the book where I got most, if not all, of the information for this video. And it's a great read. It's nice to hear her stories and her words. And I really do recommend it. So I'm going to link it on Amazon below. 
you want to check it out. Um, it's really, I really loved reading it. It kind of felt like talking to her, which is really just special for me because I love her and she's my favorite person in all of history and I just wish I could sit her down, have a cup of tea, and just talk. Um, I actually have her picture on my wall <laughs> because she inspires me and I love her and it always, she has like a slight smile in every picture she's ever had and it always just feels like comforting, like she's cheering me on, she's like, you got this. So, anyway. <laughs> I was not able to fit everything I wanted to in this video without it being an hour long. So on my social media, I will be talking more about her and elaborating more on stories from her childhood, like her friends and her more of her little adventures. So those will be linked below if you want to check those out. And that's the tea on history. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe if you want to see more and to click the little bell below if you want to be notified when I upload new videos. As always, I will be linking all of my social medias below, which now includes Tumblr, so you can keep up with me there, and all of my sources. But keep in mind that the sources will be from all three parts of my Clara Barton series, because it is hard to keep track of what information from what website goes into what video. So, but make sure to keep an eye out for parts two and three. Here I am, drinking tea on such a fine day. She would be a shame if I spilled it. It, um... Oh no! <laughs> oh no! If only I had a, a towel to, um, clean that up. <gasps> what? I do? Oh! Well, what a miracle. It's truly... Oh, I really got that everywhere, didn't I? Such a handy Christmas gift. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> mm. It looks like I peed my pants. I really... Wow, I really did that.